Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today is today. I want to get started with AP Comparative Government, with topic 1.1, the practice of political scientists. And we're going to be getting into AP Comparative Government. We're looking at some basic uh, measurements of our six course countries that we're going to cover. Political scientists compare different political systems to derive conclusions about politics. So we have more evidence to back up various statements. And we're going to look at all of that. We're looking at different measurements to compare the wealth and the government of our six countries. So let's get started. All right, so let's look at the Human Development Index first. So what the HDI does is it describes the living standards of a country and uses three different me methods of measurement. It uses life expectancy, the average amount of years someone's expected to live in a country, and this can be evidence of standards of living and health advancements and all that kind of stuff. Then there's education, which is the amount of years someone in this country is expected to get a primary school education. And then we have per capita income, which is just the amount of uh, income someone gets in a country uh, yearly, and this is also on average. So all three of these indicators help determine a country's HDI score and see how far they have developed, how great their standard of living is, and all of that. So let's look at our six course countries, Nigeria, China, Mexico, Iran, Russia, and the United Kingdom. Uh, the higher your HDI score, what do you think it is? Are we going to be more developed or less developed? Well, we can see here the United Kingdom has a higher HDI score than Nigeria and Iran. And we can use our knowledge in the United Kingdom to say that a higher HDI score is going to use more, it's going to have more development. It's going to have a better standard of living. And so we can see here the United Kingdom has a significantly higher HDI score than Nigeria. But we see a lot of countries with similar HDI scores like China, Mexico, and Iran. So what can we conclude about that? We can conclude they have very similar uh, standards of living. But Iran is considered better or China is considered, you know, worse. Uh, now, the causation of these HDI scores. In AP compared to government, causation is difficult as numerous variables can influence politics or regime stability, and there's no way to isolate and demonstrate which is producing a change. So, for example, uh, Iran could have really good life expectancy but really bad education, so it's going to have uh, a lower HDI score than maybe the United Kingdom, which has a higher education and a higher life expectancy. Uh, when looking at countries, typically the more developed countries are going to have higher life expectancy. So typically more developed countries are going to have a higher HDI score. The next uh, unit measurement is the Gini index, uh, which is also known as the Gini coefficient. And this represents the wealth and income distribution of the citizens. So a 1% score is going to have maximum equality. So uh, people in a country have similar incomes. And then 100% is going to have maximum inequality. So there's going to be a great variation uh, between incomes and wealth within that country. So when looking at our six course countries, we can look at a table to determine this. We could be using different uh, various methods to look at data. And we just looked at a graph, and now we're gonna look at a table. So the table shows that Nigeria has the lowest Gini score. And what does this mean exactly? Well, this means that they have the most equality, while Mexico with a score of 45 has the most inequality. And the range of these scores is about 10. So it's not that big of a dispersal uh, between scores for all six of these countries. Um, we can see here the Nigeria and the United Kingdom are actually tied with this score. Now, that's actually kind of cool because in the HDI score, remember, Nigeria had the lowest HDI, but the United Kingdom had the highest HDI. So that's kind of cool. So we don't see very much correlation here uh, between these two scores. And then we have the gross domestic product, which is the annual measure of market value for goods and services produced within a country's border. And then we have the GDP per capita, which is measured to determine the economic output per person within a country. So GDP, gross domestic product, is the amount of goods and services provided within the border. So if a country like America has a board, like, like autonomous regions outside America, like Puerto Rico or Guam, uh, it's not going to take that into account. It's just going to take it inside of America. But GDP per capita... Sorry, but GDP, GNP, gross, oh my gosh, I can't talk today. Gross national product is uh, going to take that into account. But we're not going to learn about GNP uh, in this course. We're just going to focus on GDP. Uh, and GDP per capita is just trying to get an average of the citizen's GDP uh, contributing to the GDP. And you can determine this by putting the GDP over the population. Uh, so let's look at our six course countries. Uh, so we see uh, Nigeria here has the lowest GDP, and then China has the highest GDP. Uh, so we can kind of actually see uh, we can kind of correlate this back to the HDI score a little bit. Nigeria has the lowest uh, HDI, but the United Kingdom and China have the two highest HDIs. Uh, China is going to have a higher GDP because it's such an industrial country. Um, United Kingdom is more tertiary, more service-based. So their GDP is definitely going to be a little lower because they're not exporting as much uh, raw goods and stuff like that. But look at this. The GDP per capita 
in China is a lot lower than the United Kingdom. What does this mean? Well, this means that the population of China is just uh, greater. So that's something that we can look at. And look at the GDP growth rate. For four of these countries, uh, the GDP is actually decreasing. Now, what could be a cause for this in recent years? Well, COVID is probably going to be a really big cause for this uh, because that caused worldwide uh, economic issues and panic and all that kind of stuff. And of course, China, they, they work in factories. They can kind of do whatever they want. We're going to learn about how the Chinese government kind of does whatever they want later in the course. Uh, and they handled COVID um, in ways that killed people who also protested. We're going to learn more about that later, though. Look at the GDP per capita. The lower the GDP, though, typically the GDP per capita is going to be lower, uh, unless population is really going to kind of influence it. Uh, so yeah, that's GDP. The next topic we're going to go over is the Freedom House score, which ranks states based on various freedoms in their country. Then this is based off political rights and civil liberties and seeing how they're being protected or given in our course countries. So here we go. We're looking at another table again. So Nigeria here is going to have the highest, uh, not the highest, sorry, United Kingdom is going to have the highest Freedom House score. So the higher the score, the more free it is. Now look at this. We can actually see correlation here with the regime type and the country. Now, if you don't know what the regime is, it's basically uh, going to be either a democratic or authoritarian regime. And based off those two terms, you probably think democratic regimes are going to be more free than author authoritarian regimes. And that's correct. In the next video, we're going to cover this a little bit more. Uh, but we can see here the more democratic regimes are going to have higher Freedom House scores, and they're going to be considered more free. Iran, Russia, and China, which have lower Freedom House scores, are considered uh, not free at all. Uh, but those are authoritarian regimes, and there's a lot more government intervention and rule. So we can definitely see some correlation there, uh, and maybe causation as well, because the government gives more freedoms, maybe more elections for people to vote in that are uh, fair and competitive. So that could also be a cause for a higher Freedom House score. In China, uh, many people are killed for speaking out against the government. So that's going to get rid of civil liberties and uh, political rights and lower their Freedom House score. The next topic is Transparency International, and this measures the ability for citizens to gain information on a government policy or event. So the higher the transparency, the lower rates of cor corruption. So this is basically a corruption um, index. So here we can see with a graph, a bar graph, that the United Kingdom has a higher uh, transparent Transparency International score. So that's very interesting to know. Um, we can see here all the other countries are a little bit more uh, behind by this. Now look at this. We can actually kind of correlate this a little bit with the HDI. It goes like United Kingdom, China. I know Russia comes before Mexico. Uh, but Nigeria and Iran are also in last place for HDI. Just a little flip. And actually look at that. They're tied. So that kind of sees correlations. So maybe the more developed a country is, the more transparent they're going to be. Uh, maybe that's something we could correlate. And then the next topic is the failed states index, which is the last thing that we're going to actually cover. Uh, and this measures the ability for a state to weaken because of pressures, conflict, and domestic turmoil. So it's basically you see, if something happens, what's the chance that this country is going to break apart, uh, devolve, or have really big conflicts? Uh, and this uses various economic, social, environmental, and political indicators. So here we can look at a, another bar graph and see that Nigeria has the bigger, has the biggest failed states index. And this is actually very close to the HDI score yet, or really close to the uh, Transparency International score. Uh, so maybe the more transparent a country is, uh, the higher chance there is that they are not going to weaken or they're not going to devolve. But the less transparent they are, uh, the more issues that we could see uh, with the failed states index score being higher. So that's something we can look at there. So we just looked at a bunch of different measurements, and that is empirical information. And empirical scientists most often use empirical information to apply concepts, support generalizations, or make arguments. So you can make an argument that the United Kingdom has a better standard of living than Nigeria, uh, and that could be uh, supported through the HDI score of the United Kingdom, which is higher than Nigeria. Now, comparative political research also requires normative statements, which are just value statements. So you could say that the United Kingdom is better than Nigeria, and then back that up with data saying that the HDI score is greater for the United Kingdom, so it's just better than Nigeria. Uh, so this can be subject to different people, and empirical data is typically more uh, objective and factual, and then normative data is more value-based. And yeah, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. So in the description is a Google Doc that will help you for AP Comparative Government Practice. I'm asking multiple choice questions, some FRQs, Quizlets, and all that fun stuff. So go check that out. Please subscribe and like the video. It's free. It really does help me out. You can change your mind later on. I'm going to have more AP Comparative Government videos like these. If you found these helpful, go ahead and watch those. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.